see these floor mats? These are the floor mats of a 2013 Mercedes-Benz C-Class. The problem, the obvious problem with these floor mats is that they're dirty. We do not like dirty floor mats. So the challenge is challenging enough when it comes to cleaning your floor mats. So what I wanna do is walk you through the basic steps of cleaning your floor mats, but I wanna show you Darren's hack on keeping floor mats clean forever. Before I get started, what I wanna do is thank Sean with Blue Tech Mobile Detailing. He's my camera guy today, so thank you, Sean. And by all means, you can follow him on YouTube and all the other social media platforms. Floor mats, that is, this is the main area of your car. These two floor mats are from a 2013 Mercedes-Benz C-Class. We just got back from SEMA 2019 in the event of who knows when the heck you're gonna be watching this. It is amazing how dirty, I, don't, I do not understand it, how dirty it is out there. So this amount of dirt, while depending upon what part of the country you might be living in, may not look that dirty to you, it would take me about two years of just normal wear and use to get these floor mats dirty that it took us four days in Vegas to get dirty in four days. It's disturbing, I don't know what's going on out there, but the ground is filthy. Point of the video is, we accept that we're gonna have to maintain our floor mats and keep them clean. I'm gonna show you Darren's hack that I use that will do two things. One, when it comes time to cleaning your floor mats, it's gonna make them much easier to get them clean. Secondly, they're gonna come clean or better each and every time that you actually are willing to clean your floor mats. And that's what's called a fabric guard. So while this is not a tutorial on how to clean floor mats, I'm going to briefly explain it once again for you. That is you pre-vacuum. Do not underestimate the effectiveness of pre-vacuuming. Why do you want to pre-vacuum? Because you want to remove the loose, dry debris why do you want to pre-vacuum? Because you want to remove the loose, dry debris and dirt as much as possible before you introduce your liquid. Not only do you pre-vacuum, but you scrub very vigorously with your chosen scrub brush. And by the way, you can find all this stuff on the links below, right below the video. There's gonna be a show more box. There's gonna be links that'll take you to my website if you in fact wanna get these exact types of tools that I use. So not only are you gonna vacuum with your choice in a vacuum, but you're going to scrub and break loose all that dry debris. And then you're gonna approach it with your choice in an all-purpose cleaner or dedicated car upholstery shampoo. So let me breeze through this and I'm gonna show you because these floor mats have in fact been treated with a fabric protector. Now my simple choice is Scotchgard. It's made by 3M. This product is readily available. Once again, if you go to my uh, website or check the links below, you can get it sent directly to your door. With a little caveat, if you have to have it sent, meaning if you're not part of the continental US of A, as in you're in Hawaii or Puerto Rico and they have to ship it by air, you will not be able to get it in that event. At this point, let me turn on my vacuum. Let me show you what I do and how quickly these can come clean and how clean I can actually get them with the understanding that they are treated each and every time that I shampoo them, I reapply a new coating of my fabric protector. At some point, you want to wear protection. Now this will be, this will serve two purposes. One, it'll prevent your hands from just getting dirty. Secondly, depending upon your choice in a car upholstery cleaner, they're not all created equal. Some of them are gonna be more caustic or more uh, stronger than others, and therefore it becomes a form of protection for your skin and your health. So regardless of the type of cleaner that you chose, now that I've pre-vacuumed this, and I've scrubbed it, and I've removed as much loose material as I can, now I'm going to spray my floor mat, 
And as a rule, light repeated applications are all, always better than one heavy application thinking that you're gonna remove every trace of dirt in one single go. It's just not the case. Now you notice here that I have a couple spots on my pre-treat, actually not pre, I'm just going to add a little more uh, solution to those areas and I'm going to space and I'm going to pay special attention to those two little areas and agitate them a little more aggressively with a little more intention. Now at this point, many guys would reach for a carpet extractor. Well, I'm here to tell you that, okay, yes, a carpet extractor is effective, but it also requires a lot more due diligence. You're gonna have to buy one, you're gonna have to set it up, you're gonna have to prepare it. So I wanna make it as simple as possible. And with my little trick, you'll realize, wow, I don't need a carpet extractor. I just need to be willing to do my floor mats on a semi, consistent basis, which I don't even know if that makes sense. Semi-consistent, whatever that means to you. Point is, is using a fabric guard will in fact make your life dramatically easier and simpler. If you've never used it, you'll be completely wowed by the effectiveness of it. Here I take my microfiber cloth. I always use microfiber, uh, two specific reasons in the context of shampooing. One, they're highly absorbent. Secondly, they don't leave lint. That's two winning features of using a microfiber cloth. Now I'm gonna mop it up. Now you see that dirt? That's a substantial amount of dirt. That's some bad Vegas dirt right there. Now I go in, now that I've mopped it up, and I go in for another light application to shampoo it even more. Now every floor mat is different. Nothing is created equal. So this is where you have to respond and adjust based on your particular situation. This has a piping around it, trim, whatever you wanna call it, that gets dirty in a different sort of way than the actual carpeting fibers. So therefore, I need to be aware of the details and adjust and finesse and nuance the moment based on your particular floor mat. I'm gonna pick a different side, a cleaner side, go back in, mop it up, doesn't matter which direction you go into. I tend to go in multiple directions in order to, well, the goal is to mop up that dirty mixture, that dirty solution now, as much as possible. Now, these floor mats are coming clean very easily. Most of you at this point could stop right now and you'd call it thumbs up. In fact, you'd call it a double thumbs up. But I know because I'm here in person and a lot of this is not gonna show up on video, I know that I can in fact get this even cleaner. So I'm gonna go in a third time. Cause you'll notice when you're cleaning your floor mats that not all areas of your floor mat are going to get equally dirty. Based on where your feet uh, touch the floor mats will determine how dirty those areas get. Once again, I'm gonna flip my cloth over, get a cleaner side, continue to mop up. Now the simple rule is because, you know, I cater to a very diverse audience. Every one of you come in with your different set of skills, experience, and knowledge. So I get questions that are all over the board. Some of the questions that I get 
some of you will think that they're seriously challenged but we all come in with different experience levels so people will say hey darren how many times am i supposed to shampoo my floor mat well the simple answer is is how clean do you want it so only you can decide what the acceptable results are so re based on that will determine how many times you in fact go in rinse and repeat rinse and repeat until you have achieved desired results at this point my floor mat looks awesome now me personally i like to brush in a single direction to create a very uniform appearance now there's many guys that like to create what we call or at least me and my guys in the past have called clean lines so they get very artistic in how they do it you simply decide what works for you just know that whatever lines that you create if your floor mat is wet which it is it's damp once it dries with those lines that you've created will kind of set them permanently into the fabric so if you want to change your mind later in the future, it's going to be more difficult to remove those, which is why I'm a fan of just brushing the floor mat while it's still damp in a very uniform or one direction to create a very uniform appearance. So now what I'm going to do is now that I've done that, I'm going to go in with a fresh side of the microfiber cloth and I'm going to brush it that direction and mop up any excess moisture uh, part of this equation so at this point this is where I come in with my choice and there's many choices I've been using Scotchgard uh, fabric protector they have different types of versions like every other industry in the world they want to get very specific so they'll make one for like sofas whatever they'll have some kind that are um, like foamy so there's different versions you don't have to overthink it this is just what's called their basic fabric protector repels liquids block stains and it truly is effective you'll find that when you start using this especially if you have a brand new car because that is often in question it's like oh Darren when should I apply this should I wait till after the first cleaning or should I do it initially the simple answer is you need to do it as soon as possible so if you have a brand new car that you feel like you don't even have to clean the floor mats first yes you apply this so that it creates a barrier against the dirt that you're going to introduce onto your floor mat as you drive your car so the simple answer for anything is that you always read the manufacturer's directions some fabric protectors will say you cannot use or you should not use on damp material some will say that it's a non-issue that's where you need to read the directions so i read the directions it does not clarify which is which i just know that when i shampoo my floor mats i will immediately apply the scotch guard to it it says that also do not do overly saturated applications just like cleaning your floor mats you want to do light applications so what I'll do is I'll spray one application like I did I just do a what's called a cross hatch or a grid pattern so that I have complete coverage I'll wait about 10 minutes and then I'll come back in and I'll do a second coating and then I'll allow these to dry whether it's in the sun in the garage matters not you just wait for it to dry before you drive your car that is my secret to keeping floor mats so for example I don't know how clearly it's going to show up in fact Sean maybe you can take my camera right now and just zoom in yeah. right here and Haley you can keep that here I have zoomed in you can see just how clean that floor mat is and just for some context this car has uh, let's see 70,000 miles on it and since I got back from Vegas I knew it was time to shampoo the floor mat because it looked horrid but here now my floor mat despite it being light 
colored in nature, this looks like a brand new floor mat. So this is my trick on how to keep your floor mats looking pristine and brand new each and every time. So you will find that the next time you have to clean your floor mat, not only is it going to clean up a lot easier, but then you reapply it so that the next time it's going to clean up a lot easier and it's going to be able to restore it to like new condition each and every time. You just gotta be willing to do it. So just do it. I promise you, you'll be happy with the results. In closing, because I know many of you are overwhelmed by the endless choices. So here I am on camera and I'm, wrecking, I'm recommending Scotch Guard, which is produced by 3M. So you'll see many tests out there of these fabric guards and they'll spray it, they'll allow it to dry and they'll pour liquid on it. And the liquid literally will just sit there and not soak into the material. And you'll think, wow, it, it's like it's literally waterproofs the material. The problem is, is while that's a compelling demonstration, it doesn't mean everything. And what I mean by that is this, it's one thing to spill liquids on your uh, floor mat or your upholstery and to be able to mop it up very easily without it soaking into your floor mat. But think about the dirt that normally is used, for lack of a better term, to get your floor mat dirty. It's dry, it's from your feet, it's not about liquids. So that's where those little demonstrations make a compelling argument, a compelling demonstration, but most of the time, your floor mats are gonna get dirty with dry material that's grinded in with your feet. So what I'm trying to illustrate is just because they may show you that does not necessarily mean it's going to work as effectively as something else. So that's where I'm just gonna apply some critical thinking. Yes, that's a compelling argument, but it's not the end all. I have years and years of experience with this particular retail product. I also use a commercial grade product, but I've done my due diligence and I know it works. So that's just a little my sidebar. So once again, I wanna hear the comments below, what you guys have to think, have you used it in the past, uh, what has been your experience, what's your go-to uh, fabric guard, do you in fact uh, have enough experience where you've used it and you've tried to clean the floor mats and you're like, oh my gosh, what a difference this makes. With that said, I will see you on the next video.